All right, welcome. This is uh, the first interview for uh, my series of interviews for theater makers. My first guest will be Marsha Hill. She is um, a well-known name in the Kankakee County area for theater. She directed countless shows. You have a number? Uh, I knew you would ask, so I looked it up last night. <laughs> um, I think 78. All right. And that's just that's just directing. That's not how many you've been in. You've got to have been involved. No, no. The, the total is 121. I figured it was pretty, it was at least over 100. Um, so she's got a wealth of experience. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, your life in the theater, and we've got some questions along the way. Uh, so we'll start with what was your first theatrical experience? The time I first performed? What, what, whether it was you performed, was your first theatrical experience seeing a show, seeing someone else perform? I grew up going to the movies with my mother. Okay. And so I was always, that was what we did. We were in the movies. And so I have always had a love of people who acted and so on. In fourth grade, I think my first performance, I used to tell my Annie cast was performing the poem, Little Orphan Annie. And I was scared to death and my fourth grade teacher put me at ease with uh, her confidence level, and I was able to go on and do it. That was probably the first time I had anything to say standing up in front of people. Mm -hmm. The parents were invited and all that. Okay. But first show that I saw in Chicago, we'll go that way, uh, was My Fair Lady. All right. I that was a gift to me from my high school um, librarian who found out I had never been to Chicago to see a play. Wow. And so that was in 1958. Okay. And I mean, that would have been a, essentially a, a big trip from, from Streeter up to Chicago. We took the Santa Fe Railroad, we took the train in, and I sat in row M in the center. Wow. I was totally mesmerized. Is, does that theater that it played at, is that still in Chicago? Is that one of the two that's still there? Oh, I'm sure it is. I can't tell you the name of it, though. Because <laughs> I, was, I was just so enthralled, but I, yeah. I didn't memorize it. I probably that's could look in an old... For your first. I could probably look in an old scrapbook and find the name. I probably um, have the program, knowing me. Right. Um, so what was, what was it that made you fall in love with performing or theater specifically on stage performing and on stage directing that sort of thing? When I entered high school, um, I had a teacher that was also in her first year of teaching and she was teaching speech and for whatever reason I got involved. I tried out for the very first show. I didn't make it. Um, it was Time Out for Ginger, I remember the name of it, but I worked backstage, and that was the beginning. I was totally hooked. I was never good at sports. I couldn't hit a ball with a bat if you had to, so uh, I discovered theater through her. All right, um, and what was, uh, what was your first time on stage as a performer? Um, in high school, that was that was the next time as a, that I performed. Um, the very next show was Rich Full Life, and I played the daughter Cynthia. Okay, and how was how was that being on stage? Uh, was it a comedy? Was it a drama? It was. I would say it was a drama. Um, okay. There was nothing too funny about it. The girl was one of these gals that didn't go ice skating because she had her parents protected her too much she was you know in poor health and elizabeth taylor played it in the movie she, that was the role she played okay that's what i remember about it but um i had to cry it was very dramatic and how was that first experience feeling you know the audience react to you on stage i was totally hooked and i 
I just love Donna. Uh, I ended up calling her Donna. She ended up being my maid of, maid of honor in my wedding. But uh, we had a very close relationship all through high school. And, and I worked every crew. I worked any show I wasn't in. But we and did that was the, the teacher? Pardon? That was the teacher? She was the teacher. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's, pretty, that's pretty amazing. She ran the Thespian Club. Mm -hmm. So I got into that early on because I had so many credits. All right. Um, and so what was your first uh, directing job that you had to do? First directing job was actually in high school. I directed uh, a couple of one X um, and they were for, I think our senior skit night or mm -hmm. end of the year or something or other. <laughs> Um, and Wonderful titles like "Why I Am a Why I Am a Bachelor." Okay, so it was a it was a series of scenes or one acts. Mm -hmm. um, did you do uh, Did you do all of them, or did you just do like one or two of them? No, it was just the one sh one shot. I had to play a role in it. I played Henrietta. Okay. And I was, we went to state speech contest also, and I was in a show called uh, Brilliant Performance. Okay. And what was, uh, did anything scare you that first time that you had to sort of put on that, that title of director, putting that, that short one piece together? No, it, it was just, it was kind of fun working with your peers. You know, you wondered if you were going to get the respect um, and I had a few clowns in my group, but mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I knew what I was doing because I'd worked as assistant director for Donna at a, for a couple of shows. And um, I ended up going to her college, ISU, and at that time it was ISNU. And I even had some of the same professors she had who remembered her. So there was an overlap. And so what was, what was the first full show, whether it was a play or a musical that you had to, that you took on as a director? As a director? Mm -hmm. um, I have to go back a ways here. I'm trying to find it. Mine, unfortunately, aren't listed uh, <laughs> chronologically. I think the first thing I did, um, as I recall, um, I did some in, in college. And when I came home in the summers, I worked at the, with the community, ooh, talk, clear it out, community players of Streeter, Illinois. Right. And I really got a, a big foundation there. And typically in community theater, it happens sometimes that nobody wants to do the children's shows. They want to do the big name shows. Mm -hmm. And so I would come home from college and in the summers I would do the children's shows. And so I did, um, I have to get look at my list. I did Winnie the Pooh and I did The Emperor's New Clothes and I did a wonderful little one act called So Long. And, I think those were some of the children's shows I first did. Okay. And then in the adult section, um, well, I don't know where you want to go. You want to go to high school? Where do you, where do you want to go with it? What were you, like, the, the first big show that you, uh, that you had to take on, like, uh, you know, if it was all adults, that sort of thing, you know, outside, in, outside of school that you, you kind of took on in your adult life? And as a director, okay. Um, Do you remember if it was a, a play or a musical? Oh, I know it was a play. I did a lot of plays. <clears throat> um, I didn't get into musicals, directing musicals. Um, I was an assistant for some in Streeter. Um, and I came back and did some after we moved to Kankakee, but for, um, for many years, I just did straight shows. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I'm trying to think what it was that I did that was first. I'm old, you know, so the brain well, is. You've had a long career. <laughs> um, I remember distinctly what the first show was I did in Kankakee. Why don't we start there? Sure. The first show I did here was See How They Run. Okay. And that was kind of a British comedy, which was great fun. A lot of in and out of door running, like Lend Me a Tanner Is, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very fast moving, had fun characters. And that was the first show that I directed for Kankakee. At that time, it was Little Theater. Right. Was there anything about taking that on that uh, scared you at all? The pace very rapid pace and it was quite a challenge to get the timing and get the people right. to learn the timing farce it, it was kind of a farce no it was just no. uh mistaken identities and okay. the typical in and out in and out it was uh it was just a funny show <laughs> it was very funny so what what was the biggest lesson you took from directing that show? Cast it well. Um, I think casting a show is the very basis for a director to find the right characters for, uh, or to find the right people for the right characters. If you don't have that, um, you're out you're out of luck <laughs> so um and i would guess this might come from uh your former teacher was there any advice that you got before you took on directing oh she gave me a lot of advice <laughs> so um enunciation pronunciation um uh, looking people in the eye on stage, being true to your character. Okay. Um, always looking through the script uh, to see what other characters say about you and okay. what the author says about your character. Um, just trying to find out what that character is made out of. Um, so that you can bring it into your own. Right, right. So uh, a question that was submitted to go along with that sort of thing, um, the question was, uh, do you have any advice for someone who has good ideas as far as directing, but they're not sure how to work their way up to being a director? I would say do as much as you can. Uh, around theater uh, and don't feel you have to start there because it's not where you start, it's where you finish as the old saying goes. Right. Um, I did everything, sound effects, uh, props, makeup. Um, tech, technical theater was not my forte. All the years I've been doing it, <clears throat> I tried to surround myself with good people mm -hmm. who had the skills to do that. My my thing was oral interpretation and um, being able to stage a show and make it look scenically good and balanced, a balanced stage. Uh, I always said I wanted to have somebody, if they had a camera, to be able to take a picture as the show went along and know that that was a good picture. Right. And yet it I didn't want it to be false. It had to be real. Right. Um, so now, now you mentioned that um, uh, one of the things that you learned from uh, directing was uh, casting the show. Mm -hmm. So is there anything uh, specific that you look for when someone gets in front of you to audition? I look to see how they relate to the other people on stage. I look to see if they're um, able to move, if 
so they don't have to just stand there with a script in their hand if they have one. Um, if they put something into it with bodily action, um, if they gesture, if they have expression, if they're audible, that's a very big piece of it. Um, if it looks like they've really, they're prepared. I can't say right. enough about being prepared for auditions. Right. But as far as learning how to direct, I would say don't be afraid of all the grunt work beforehand because that all of that prepares you for directing. Mm -hmm. Is there, uh, is there anything that you as a director, when there's people in front of you that are auditioning, is there anything that you, that, um, that impresses you that may, that other people may not think about? Um, I say an example for, um, you know, if they're not singing from the show, is it their research on picking a song that's similar to the character they want instead of just a song that shows off their, their voice? Does that, do you take those things into consideration that this person has prepared? You can usually tell after a while of doing this who's prepared and who isn't. And uh, if they've chosen something that is not from a show, usually they were always songs that right. were from the show. But if they've in the new way of doing things, if they've selected something not from the show, you can tell they know the show by what they select. Right. Um, you can tell they've researched it. You mm -hmm. can tell that this is very similar to the um, thread that goes through this play that we're going to do or this mm -hmm. musical that we're going to do. And it has something that gives you that feeling that they understand the play. Or the musical. Right. right. So in all the shows you've directed, and you you know, you you said you've directed, you know, 70 plus shows over the years. Has there been a show that's the one that kind of got away that either you didn't get the chance to direct it or you know, it just never came along the chance to try to do it? Is there is there one that kind of got away? There's some I wasn't chosen to direct. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, is, is there one in particular that, you know, if, if someone came to you now and said, you know, what, here's the, you tell me the title, you, you get to do it. This is the show you've always wanted to do that you never got to do before. One of my favorite shows, and I've never done it, is The Secret Garden. Okay. And a lot of people shy away from it, thinking they can't do that opening scene with the ayahs and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, there has to be a way that it can be done. It's been done everywhere. So, right. but it's it's not. Um, it's technically a challenge to do that show, I think. And so, I think a lot of community theaters stay stay away from it. Okay. Um. So is there, is there a show that you've done in the past that you would love a chance to maybe revisit, do in a different way, that sort of thing? No, oh, I have many favorites because I've done some shows four and five times, obviously. But um, MAME was always a very favorite of mine. And that hasn't been done around here for a while. Um, I did it twice. Uh, that was just always one of my favorites. Um, there's so many, Sunset Boulevard and so many things that are out there now that, you know, I know the sets, a lot of them, we have to mm -hmm. be careful of what we can build and what we can't build. But um, I'm pretty happy with my career, Tyler, actually, and everyone has been like another child to me, and you can't say, what did you like best? And um, I loved them all. I really did. I had some cast members I didn't love, but we, <laughs> we made it happen. Um, so here was another submitted question. Are there any, uh, or what are your biggest pet peeves 
uh, that you have as either a director or an actress on stage? Someone who doesn't memorize their lines. That's the first one. Uh, it holds the cast back if everybody else is moving forward and you're still waiting for somebody who's standing there saying line, line. Um, if you have a deadline and you say this is when the script should be memorized, that's what people who do their job always went out. They just do. Um, everybody that's ever been in a show knows my two pet peeves, which are get and just. <laughs> and uh, I've made a career of that, but I got that from Mrs. Peterson, my director. Uh -huh. um, I always remember the time that <clears throat> she was so nervous doing her first show that she wrote across the front of the stage in chalk, loud, because she always pr said, be loud and slow, because people tend to talk too fast sometimes when they deliver lines. Right. And so that night she went to, it was her first show, and she went across the stage, big letters. At that time you had footlights. They were behind the footlights, and she wrote L-O-U-D and S-L-O-D. So it came out loud and slod. <laughs> and so when the first character came out, they saw that, and they broke character and started to laugh. And she was furious because they were laughing, but then she found out later why. Right. So it was our, <laughs> one of our favorite stories. So what do you think makes a, a good play or a good musical? A variety of songs, um, if it's a musical that you have, you know, some that bring the audience, you know, excitement and some that touch the heart. Uh, so it, it's not just a constant loud, loud, loud beat. It has something to the story that has some heart to it. Mm -hmm. um, you can tell by the shows I've done the kinds of shows I like, so. Yeah. So, have you had any, and you can, you can, you can choose to, to answer this one, because you might have to call some people out, but ha have there been any real big onstage flubs over the years that either were just a complete accident, you know, that couldn't be helped, that sort of thing, that kind of bring a, I'll go with bring, bring a smile to your face instead of a, a frustration to you, that sort of thing. Um, well, you first you said flub. Now you're saying that brought a smile. Do you, so the, my favorite. Well, I, well, for example, you know, I know that there's a, 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 an old story of uh, um, My Fair Lady while uh, the last time that it was done for KVT that the house didn't, the stage crew didn't turn the house around during a song it was supposed to be turned around. Um, I've heard that story from several people. Uh, during one of the performances, they didn't come and turn the house around uh, like they were supposed to. And um, I believe it was Phyllis went backstage and yelled at them. Yeah. Obviously, that's a frustrating one. Did, were there any anything that happened on stage that maybe didn't do that? But just, you know, maybe it was a, a somebody said something just slightly wrong. Like you said, the loud and slod. Yeah. That just kind of bring a, a a smile to your face, that, that little flub that happened. Well, this wasn't a flub, but it was certainly something that, that uh, I didn't direct. And God rest his soul, he just passed away a week and a half ago. Oh. Um, I did South, one of the times I did South Pacific, um, mm -hmm. I cast a fellow that uh, was one of the sailors, and he had the deep singing voice mm -hmm. and did the low, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, blah, 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 you know, like the frame of a dame, and he did that number. And he was a friend of mine, but he had this wonderful bass voice. And in the show, they're loading up to leave, and they're crossing the stage, and they're working, and you have a lot of crossovers. And he went through the stage with this very, very long pipe and had somebody else carrying the other end of it. And 
he happened to own Blady Plumbing and Heating. Mm -hmm. And as he's walking across the stage, there was a sign hanging from it that said Blady Plumbing and Heating. <laughs> and the audience all knew him because he was a favorite figure in town. And everybody was laughing. So the director, of course, laughed too. But yeah. that was definitely not planned. Um, something that necessarily ruined anything by no it didn't uh, ruin anything but it it certainly was a, a, a comic moment I've had some other disasters we had a an act or a fire curtain that came down during Oliver one of the productions I did of Oliver and it just slowly started descending to the stage and boom hit the stage and so we had to stop the show and figure that out um, oh. And another time, in fact, it was with Music Man, we had to cancel the first uh, show because uh, something happened with the rigging and the, um, the curtain fell down and we had to get somebody from Chicago to come down immediately and help fix it. And so we had to postpone opening one night because of the wow. of the uh, rigging on the stage at LCC at that time. Wow. And I've always had the rubber chickens that appeared on stage that weren't directed. Right. And, um, that's a no-no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as we've talked about it, your, your career in theater has, um, ha has been quite a, quite a long time. Um, there's been a lot of major shifts in theater throughout the time that you've been involved from, you know, as a child to now, um, and you've seen them happen. Um, changes from, you know, the era of Rogers and Hammerstein into, uh, Sondheim into the big mega musicals from Britain to, uh, shows nowadays that tend to have a, a darker theme, rock scores, that sort of thing. What are your what are your feelings as those shifts happened in theater? What did you think about those? Did you, did you hope that those past eras wouldn't die? Did you embrace those new eras coming in? I'm a lover of Rodgers and Hammerstein and the old musicals. Um, that's what I grew up with. That's what I listened to. That's all the, those are the lyrics I know. And so many of the, songs that are sung today in a lot of shows that are just loud and mm -hmm. music is unreal. You can't even understand the words. And I know other people will go to a show and think, oh, it's a love song. They're coming up. They're going to open their mouth and sing, you know, <laughs> and you have to overcome a lot of that. But um, in, in my day, I loved what I did. I loved the shows I did. And uh, in today's world, it belongs to the younger people. It's it's like any music that changes. Uh, you know, I grew up in the 50s, and so our music was different mm -hmm. in the 70s, and then it was different in the 80s. And as it grows, things change. And it's not that I can't change with it. It's just I've mellowed. <laughs> and and I, I've done pretty much what I wanted to do, and I've loved it. Oh. Do you enjoy being able to expose a younger generation, uh, whether it be um, shows that you have worked on in the past several years or your grandkids to those old, those old classic shows? I think for most, for the most part, a lot of them are just unaware mm -hmm. of those shows because no one plays those albums, as we call it, at, uh, anymore. And, it's what you grow up with. So if you grow up with that beat that Cher and everybody has, uh, that's where your music tones come in. And right. uh, they think the other stuff is slow and easygoing. It's no different than Perry Como and Frank Sinatra and all the crooners that I grew up with. And now right. I don't understand most, most singers and you, you could just pass me by with the, titles of people, um, they mean nothing to me because I don't hear that kind of music. I still right. get Sirius XM and no commercial here, but that's the kind of thing I play. Right. 
Oh, I, I completely agree. I, I tell people often that, that most music today I, I don't listen to. You know, it's not my it's not my cup of tea. I I would rather sit down and listen to, you know, the singer songwriters from the '60s and '70s, that sort of thing. You know, I'm a most people know I'm a big Billy Joel fan. I'd rather listen to a song that's got a story than yeah. a song that's just the same set of lyrics 45 times. Yes. Um, but uh, I, I ask about that as far as introducing because um, obviously community theater does that. They don't get a chance to do a lot of newer things. So they do have to do older classic things. And um, I am part of a, a generation of uh, that was young once that you influenced. And I have a great appreciation for classic golden age of Broadway musicals that I think most people be, are shocked by, that I love things like South Pacific and Music Man, that sort of thing. But yet, I also love the darker rock shows, you know, of today. And even the, you know, the, the big, um, the, the big mega musical. So um, it, do you, do you, I know you probably watch the Tonys when they come on. Do you watch them sometimes and wonder where theater is heading? I watch them all the time. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this year they were canceled. But right. um, no, I grew up watching talent shows and award shows. And uh, that's people say, well, do you watch this? And if it's some series on TV, no, I watch award shows. Mm -hmm. And um, America's Got Talent and The Voice and all of that. And some of, I'm pretty judgmental. <laughs> and some of the things I, I think, Oh, why did they even make it this far? You know, but right. um, as far as the musicals, um, sometimes it's different when you are seeing something here in the Midwest as compared to when you see it in London or New York. And they have the people and the technical people that can do a lot of those things and make them look so much better. And I just think, oh, we couldn't do that. <laughs> you know? Right. And, um, but uh, I understand the wind changes and I understand the changes. It's just, um, it's not my favorite thing. Right. So what do you think are some of the important lessons that theater teaches uh, actors, technical people, that sort of thing? What are, what are some of the important lessons that, you maybe have learned over the years or helped teach over the years that you think are, are important lessons for anybody to learn? Okay. Confidence comes to mind first. Um, I, I think being able to go on stage and uh, feel confident because you know your lines, you know your part, you know what you're supposed to do. Um, I think that confidence carries over into a business world, into a volunteer world. I think organization, because you have to be organized in order to follow uh, just coming to rehearsals and knowing, oh, I've got to be there and I've got to be on time. And you learn a, a certain discipline. Mm -hmm. um, I think you learn a, a love of a new family because you do become family when you're doing a show. Uh, I, I think you learn respect for other actors. I think you learn um, just a way to project your voice, hopefully. Uh, we came from the era where you didn't have microphones. Yet. Right. I mean, you had to project mm -hmm. and you couldn't depend on a microphone. And I still tell people that in my cast today, don't depend on a mic, but what if the battery goes dead? Uh, we've all had that happen somewhere along the way. Uh, depend on your voice, depend on you, and uh, not necessarily the sound man that's going to help you out. Uh, I just feel that theater today uh, gives kids such a wonderful start in just being who they are and knowing that they have something to offer and that they have a talent and a skill 
that perhaps is God given. And um, as you know, we always say there's magic in the theater and theater is magic. And blessed are those who create that magic. And I, I thank Katie Walsh Gordon for it all the time because she's the one who started it with KVT. And uh, I just feel that uh, I was the introverted kid that found theater as my, my passage into life. And I'm very happy that I could spend over 50 years doing it. Now you've had, um, I, what, I guess what theater people would say, you've had uh, a few different day jobs over the years. I know you've been a teacher before. You owned a travel agency. Yes. I know I'm missing other ones. Oh yeah. <laughs> Are there, do you, did the things you learned in performing theater lessons in theater classes, did those things come into play and help you in those other jobs? Oh, absolutely. Um, long before I ever became a teacher professionally, I taught Sunday school and Bible school and I was in front of people doing those kinds of things at church. I was reading things. Um, in the eighth grade, I played Mary in the Christmas pageant. I was scared to death because I didn't think I, I could play Mary, the mother of Jesus, and <laughs> the minister convinced me I could. Uh, so uh, it's, I just think it gives you so much uh, of a skill to, to be able to talk to people, to, be, I, to relate to people. I had a, so many different jobs. Uh, I was a camp counselor. I had, I was in charge of a lot of kids in a cabin and um, I was a, a volunteer all my life. I volunteered in all kinds of organizations. I had many, many different kinds of jobs. I was on many, many boards. Um, so you, you didn't have that fear of speaking out. You didn't have that fear of your opinion, or maybe I have something to contribute. Um, organization has always been something that I've, I've loved handling. Um, I don't know if I'm answering your question. But. No, you are. I mean, I, I, cause I think about knowing that you, you know, you and Lee had, you know, the, you know, Hill Travel and you guys did that for quite a while. I would imagine, you know, obviously you have to sell these vacation packages to people and being able to having to sit down and talk to people about it. I'm sure there's a bit of, you know, theater to that, you know, convincing people of these, the, you know, these locations, that sort of thing. So that was my, my mindset in that question. Okay. Okay. No, I, I did a lot of travel talks. I did a lot of, um, promoting, um, in the early part, we, we owned the agency for 15 years and it was one of the oldest in the nation because people came to um, Kankakee to get passports and it, it was the old steamship travel. So when we inherited this agency, it was all, almost a hundred years old. Oh, wow. And, um, it was Schneider Travel Bureau and then it was uh, Mrs. Hemstreet who took it over and then it was Schneider or Hemstreet Schneider and then, then it went into Hillham Street and then we finally changed it to Hill. So when I would go to meetings and people would say, well, how old your agency? I could tell them and they would just be aghast. But <clears throat> where I'm going with this is um, I learned early on in the business that cruising was going to be a pretty big entity. And I, that was when Carnival had three little ships and I mean little. Right. And, uh, they ended up with a mega umbrella owning many, many different cruise companies. And so it was educating people on the love of cruising that, that I did. I talked about all kinds of countries. I've been to over 20 countries in my life. Um, and I've been fortunate to be able to travel a lot. And even when I was on trips, uh, 
with groups that my husband had in Chevrolet business, um, I was always the one organizing all the tours and the women wanted to shop, shop, shop. So I would get a core of women that wanted to go see things and do things and make reservations for seeing a show or do something different. So it just, all of that helped me have confidence. It goes back to the word confidence. Yeah, right. Um, so jumping back to something we kind of talked about uh, earlier with, you know, the way that theater is heading now, has there been any shows within the last, newer shows within the last few years that you've either seen play on the Tonys or heard their, the songs on, um, on the radio, that sort of thing that you've been really impressed by that you've wa thought, wow, that is, that is something special that doesn't come along very often. And if it's Hamilton, you can say it's Hamilton. <laughs> I'm probably one of the few people that has not seen Hamilton. Nope, I'm one with you. I have not seen it. I'm waiting till July 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did listen to the, the CD um, in my car somewhere. I don't know. Somebody loaned it to me because they thought I was weird because I hadn't seen it. But it, it was more a weirdness about paying that much for a ticket to right. to that show. And yeah. it, it's not that I couldn't do it, but I didn't want to do it. Right. And uh, I heard it, and I've seen clips of it, and I'm impressed um, that someone could write something like that. But um, to answer your question, I'm trying to think what I've seen. Uh, I don't know how far back and how new. It's not that new. But I, I really love Sunset Boulevard. And yep. uh, I mentioned that twice. But I think it's because it's probably a role I wish I could play. But I don't think I can. <laughs> um, well, they're supposedly supposed to be moving towards that becoming a movie. So it might get some more exposure out there to people. I, I, I know some of it. I don't know a lot of the show. I know a lot of the songs, uh, but it's not one that I've been super exposed to. But, you know, that's always my hope when a movie version is made that it'll expose some people to, oh, the show maybe they didn't quite know. Well, most people that go to the theater seem to want to come out singing something. You know, you, you go to a show and there's one memorable tune at least that you that you latch onto and, and you can hum it in your head and, and remember it and think about it. But so many today, there's nothing that I can even understand, much less hum. Yeah. Uh, and that's why I think I like the old ones because you know all the words to them because you grew up with them. And that's what I like, sorry. No, I, I, I completely understand. Um, it, has there been a show, not necessarily a production, but just a musical in general that you either heard or you saw that when you got done that you just said, I don't ever have to hear that ever again. Like it just, you know, th that's definitely, well, you know what, I'll wait because that's technically one of the questions that's coming up. Okay. Um, part of my, my list at the end. So uh, the next question that I have um that someone submitted is, uh, is there anything within the world of theater that you wish you had either studied or been better at? I know you mentioned earlier that you weren't really a, a tech person. Is there anything that you, you look back on now and you go, I really wish I would have, you know, or I could have had the chance to, you know, learn more about that aspect and work on it? Hmm. Well, it wouldn't be, I might have liked to know how lighting can affect um, a stage more than I do. I really have to depend on people who know lighting and it's all changed anyway. <clears throat> Just the same as sound and microphones have changed. Um, I think I've done almost every other job connected to a show other than 
lighting. I've helped at a sound table by telling them when the people are coming in and out, right. but I've not run sound. Um, I've done sound effects backstage. Um, so lighting, I was never good at design and drawing. Um, I did a lot of work with costumes, mainly because I could sew. There aren't that many people that learn to sew anymore. Um, but that wasn't my first love. <clears throat> and I always had people who were much better at it working for me. Um, makeup, I wish I'd had the opportunity to learn more about makeup and design faces and, and prothesis and all of that that go along with it. Um, I did a lot of character makeup for people and children's theater and animal faces and all of that kind of thing over the years. But um, that's another element that I would have liked to have known. Um, at the time that I went to ISU, they didn't have a theater department. They had just a speech department. Okay. And they had an emphasis that you could have in theater. And so I kind of walked a balance beam, you might say, when I was going to school there because my minor was English. So I was taking the speech courses I had to take with the emphasis in theater and I was active in many, many shows in college. Everything that came along, I think I was on some crew or on stage. But I walked that balance beam because I was also in forensics and I loved oral interpretation of literature and finding the right meaning in words. So I grew up doing programs in college with some of my professors and we wrote programs and performed programs for women's clubs and people that needed a program. Right. Um, and I judged speech contests from the time I think I was a sophomore in college when they used to hire us to come, you know, be judges and they couldn't get the real judge they wanted. So I judged over 50 years for IHSA. Mm -hmm. And um, you learn a lot by judging. Yeah. And I think if I could have chosen a career for myself, I would love to be a casting director because I think my forte lies in casting a show. And um, that's what I love doing. Right. So you mentioned, you know, you went to school for English and, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to assume you read a lot. I do, but not an overabundance. I'm in right. two different book clubs and, um, uh, I used to read a great deal, but Right now, I have so many interests. I can't. <laughs> I can't complete them all before I know I'm leaving this you earth. Are, you are. You are rather. You are rather busy woman, as I have heard the various uh, small clubs and groups that you do, from cooking to book clubs to that sort of thing. So, with you mentioning, you know, a show that you always wanted to tackle, which was uh, Secret Garden. Um, was there ever a, a story that you read over the years that you always wished someone would have turned this into a musical? You would have loved to get your hands on this story if someone would have just written it as a musical. Mm. Right now, off the top of my head, I can't think of one. Um, and it's hard because so many of them, there's not a lot of classic stories that haven't been... Well, no, that's, that's the first thing that comes to my mind is what hasn't been done. <laughs> um, I, can't, I can't right now think of one. I'd have to really ponder that a minute. Um, and I don't want to waste your time. But um, it would, it, Is there a, um, uh, it could be a, a movie. Is there a movie that you love that you think, oh, I think that could translate. And we know that there's movies that have not translated well to stage and some that have done very well. Um, things like Sunset Boulevard translated very well, and some that haven't. Is there a movie that you personally love and you think, oh, I wish, I think that could that could be on stage with a really good score? Mm, some of the movies, or yeah, some of the movies that I've seen don't lend themselves to musicals, okay. and I think of the movies that 
I've cried a lot in and things like that, but they don't lend themselves to mu to musicals. Um, right now, I can't think of one. I'm just okay. brain dead on it. No, that's all right. Uh, so we will end our interview with a series of questions. I, uh, as I told you before, I've sort of uh, refashioned the questions from the end of Inside the Actor's Studio, uh, the questions by uh, Bernard Pivot, um, a little bit more about theater. Uh, so uh, we'll end it with that, with what is your favorite musical? Taylor, I have to be honest and say, they're all my favorites or I wouldn't have done them. Well, I mean, is there one that, you know, not necessarily not one that you've worked on, but is there a musical that you could listen to, you, you never get tired of listening to? I think sometimes it's the first one you saw, which is My Fair Lady. Okay. Um, I auditioned for that show once and I worked six months on the part before and I did not get the part. Um, I wasn't blessed with that stronger singing voice and um, it wasn't local, but I, I always, that's why I never directed it because it's too close to my heart. Okay. I've done Sound of Music multiple times and I know some people gag at the sound of it, but I never tire of Sound of Music. Um, I love Fiddler on the Roof, obviously. Um, the ones I've repeated, South Pacific, uh, Something's Afoot, which no one had ever heard of. Uh, that was one of my all-time favorites. And it's one, one of my of favorites that I've done one of the most fun shows that I've ever done, and I've done it more than three times, or at least three times. Um, I, I will never repeat Camelot because I did that, and I will never repeat Barnum because I, we could never replicate that show. Um, and both of them, the casts and just the atmosphere and the sets. And it was in the early days of KVT. And when I think back on it, I thought, how did we do that? Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, more people um, today that are still around never got to see it. But everyone I've ever done, they're like my children. Right. I love them all. <laughs> Do you have a, a least favorite musical out there in the world? A least favorite? Yeah, one that you just go, you know, if it comes on, you know, if you're listening to Sirius, that you just go, oh, I just, it's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> I don't want to break any hearts. Um, oh, you're fine, because my answers to that question always upset people. It, it's not that I've never met a musical I didn't like. It's, um, I haven't seen them all yet. Um, right now, nothing comes to my mind. Okay. I'm sorry to say. No, you're fine. Uh, I, don't, I, I just, I go and I enjoy the atmosphere. I love the crowd. I love everything about going and... Um, if I didn't like the music or I didn't like the performers, I still love the experience. Okay. What is your favorite word? Word? Word. Do you have a word that you just, whenever you hear it, you enjoy it? Don't ask me to spell it. Anti-disestablishmentarianism. <laughs> What's your least favorite word? Some of them with four letters. Okay. Uh, what sound or noise do you love hearing? Children laughing. What sound or noise do you hate hearing? 
screaming. So outside of theater, all the professions that you, you've had over the years, other than those, is there a profession that you would have liked to have attempted? Being a casting director. Right. I wondered if that would still be the same thing. Is there one outside of theater that you would have loved to attempt? I've always wanted to be a writer. Okay. I, I, I would read something you wrote because I think you'd have some very interesting ideas. Is there a profession out there that you would just absolutely not want to do? Absolutely not want to do. It could be you just, I, I don't want to deal with that, or I don't think I'd be very good at it. Oh, that there's a long list there, but uh, <laughs> um, I don't like heights, but I, I do fly on in planes, but um, my days of riding uh, on uh, roller coasters is over. So uh, being a roller coaster tester is out of the question. No, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I wouldn't do that. I don't, I don't think that, you know, I, I wish I was a better cook, but I don't want to be a chef. Uh, I've done too much of that in quarantine. Um, <laughs> uh, what am I, uh, da, 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 da. Um, anything that's real dangerous. Okay. You know, I appreciate life too much. And then the final question, if heaven or, or an afterlife exists, what would you like to hear when you get to the pearly gates? A lot of my friends that are already there are saying, couldn't wait for you to come. Thank you very much for being the first interview. I think this has been uh, very enlightening. I think that uh, your, your opinion and your thoughts on everything uh, should be much more uh, valued than I think some people think. Um, I always appreciate you. You've been a big influence on me as, a, as an actor, me as a director. Uh, so I thank you for being the first, uh, first interview for this. And is there anything else that you'd like to uh, share with anybody watching? Um, <clears throat> I'm very proud of all the kids that are like you that came into theater early on. Excuse me, I need some water. <clears throat> and they have gotten the spark and the love for theater. And they've gone on and I have kids, I call them my kids, my theater kids that are acting all across the United States um, and some even in Europe. And I know that they started sometimes in a children's theater production and they got the bug. So maybe they got the same infectious disease that I did and I've passed it on. And I, I hope, and I truly hope that I've made a difference. I, I can say you definitely have. So uh, again, I thank you and I thank everybody that's watched and we'll be back with a, uh, another interview next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Taylor.